Hello, my name is Don Heyman. My wife Rita and I have been coming here to South Coast uh, since uh, July of 2020. And uh, coming up on three and a half years, we have enjoyed every minute of our time here with the teaching, with the worship, with the community and crews, and we have been so blessed to be part of this uh, light in the darkness of New England. Our story is, uh, goes back a, a long time. We're coming up on our 55th wedding anniversary in 2024. Uh, we come from a lot of artistic background. Uh, she is uh, an artist herself in uh, oil and watercolor painting. Um, I started to dabble in photography uh, with some seriousness in 2007 when we were invited to meet her cousin and his wife from Norway in Rome. And we uh, absolutely jumped at that opportunity. Who wouldn't? <laughs> um, we had a, uh, a villa that was uh, three blocks from the Colosseum, which you could see from the roof, um, which you weren't supposed to go up on, but I did anyway, take pictures of obviously. <laughs> so we had a great trip. We saw the history of the Book of Romans kind of come to life in many different ways as we traveled through and saw the, the, just all the history that is in that city. And uh, it was just amazing to see the churches, to see how the, the church grew uh, through all the centuries, and to see the old catacombs and churches that were hidden um, below the street. Um, just an amazing witness to the power of God within that city and uh, the people of Rome that Paul wrote to. Um, so as we started the 2023 journey through the book of Romans, uh, I started thinking, hmm, I have hundreds of photographs from Rome. I wonder if there's something that could be done with them to really bring the history of Rome and the visuals of Rome into our church environment. And late spring of uh, this year, uh, I brought some photos of Rome to show Pastor Marco and Pastor Lindsay. And it's at that point that uh, Pastor Marco told me about the chapel and the plans for it and that he really was trying to create a quiet space for people to go and really get alone with God, to meditate, to pray, and just to be quiet and get out of the, the, the bedlam of normal life and sometimes even just the, the noise before services in here with the hundreds of people that are roaming around. And so he said, can you do something with your photographs to um, maybe enhance that space and, and bring it into that old world uh, environment that I really want to create here? I said, I'll go through my photographs, I'll put some ideas together and show them to you. And if it looks like we're on the right track um, and you want to do it, then we will. And so we did. <laughs> We have uh, the photographs out here that are to invite you in, and then we have a series of photographs inside to create some different themes and moods to bring people uh, into that quiet space with God. It's those quiet times that reinforce what we learn and what we do and what God's doing in us. We don't think of silence as praise but it is, and sometimes it can be the most potent form of praise because in the quiet of God's presence, he can change us as well as reveal to us. And so, welcome to New Life South Coast Chapel.
So we're going to take a, a little walk through uh, some of these photographs to give you an idea of how I put them together. Um, what they mean to me is I went through this journey of creating this space. Um, and along the outside wall here that you can't miss when you walk in the front doors are five panels that deal with different elements of meditation and reflection. The first two, transparency and attitude, are really kind of the preparatory stages of getting ready to go into God's presence and allow him to do his work in us. As we were walking through the streets of Rome, we had just come out of one of the churches, and uh, we were walking around to, I guess you could call it the dark side of the church, as we were making our way to the, the mausoleum of uh, Emperor Augustus. And we're hurrying to, to get through the streets there, and I turn around and I see this gate with this plaque with humility on it. And it was such a potent thing to my heart at the time that I had just enough time to snap off a few shots to, to capture this on this kind of old gate in the back of the church, hardly used and hidden from sight. And that's probably a good reflection of what humility is, that people don't use it too much. And if we really want to see what God's doing in our life and what he wants to do in our life, then we have to go through this doorway with an attitude of humility. Typically, when we, we think about meditation, we think about God revealing something to us from his word or from uh, teaching or from an interaction with another believer. And it's usually a thought, it's usually an idea, maybe it's a vision, um, maybe it's sin that we need to deal with. But it usually comes in, in, a, in a snapshot and we get it and we get excited and yet we think we're done. And so we go away, and we take just that one snapshot of revelation with us. But it's only the beginning. It's really only the beginning. It's what we do with that and what we allow God to do with that in us that takes us to the next step or the next area, which is illumination. The next in this process uh, that I've experienced is that once God brings that, that revelation, that, that insight, that thought, that vision, he really wants to take that and, and grow it with the purpose of changing us. And that's this next piece, which is illumination. This is one of, a, one of the photos that didn't come from Rome. Um, it's actually from Middletown, Rhode Island at St. George's Academy and it's their chapel. Um, beautiful space, absolutely beautiful space. Um, and we had opportunity to, uh, with a photo club down there, to have exclusive access to this for a couple hours. And all of a sudden I found, I'm in this chapel and there's nobody else there. And I'm watching the light from the window and there are, the photographs got these rays of light that just illuminate the wall with the colors, yellows and blues and reds. But when we first got there and just as everyone left, all of a sudden I noticed that there was just this little shade of light as the sun moved around the window to light up this corner. And I'm looking at the colors and I go, sooner or later, the way the light is moving around the window, it's gonna run across the whole wall. So I'm in there alone for an hour, waiting for the light. What is meditation? Waiting for the light. And as I was thinking about this, especially during the preparation of, of these photographs for the room, and the exterior panels here. 
that this whole idea of illumination is God lighting up the walls of our heart, lighting up the walls of our soul, little by little by little, as we give him the time to do that. If I walk away with the revelation, I get this, and no light here. But if I wait, and I let him work, little by little, he will illuminate my soul under his light to bring conviction, to bring rejoicing, to bring blessing, and to really expand the truth of what started as this ray of light in Revelation. And as I was thinking about that, um, the other thing that came to mind is there is a, a grace of God that this process of illumination represents. As I watched the, the light go across, we see God's perfect approach to bringing light into our lives and into our souls and into our hearts and into our minds because he does it a little bit at a time. He doesn't blast the whole wall with light. He walks us through the whole process of revealing to us the things that he has for us in ministry, in work, in blessing, in the things that he needs to change in our attitudes and our, our awareness of sin. And there's a verse in Psalm 18, it's in verse 35, and the end of the verse talks about how God's gentleness makes us great. This represents that gentleness of God, that if we let it run its course, he will make us great. He will make us great. So what we do with reflection is, all these steps that we have gone through from really developing an attitude of humility to uh, opening our hearts and being transparent to ourselves so that we can let God work in us and the, the work of illumination, reflection takes all that and brings us to a place where we can really see God's blessing and be thankful and grateful and just think about the goodness of God in our lives. Some things to think about as you enter the room. Allow God to work, allow God to speak, allow God to bless.